during now there's a new castle. I'm very I'm worried about what that is. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Greetings, hallucinations. My name is Nathan Hall. I'm a Snow's stand comedian. First, have to pay some bills. Let's get this out of the way. Um, let's do this. Uh, make some noise for yourselves for supporting uh, live standing up comedy here in Anchorage, Alaska. Thank you for showing up. Yes, absolutely. We're an anti-social group of people. Congratulations. Um, also, I need to thank our sponsors. Uh, that would be. Anchorage Chrysler Jeep Dodge Anchorage Athletic Club and Budweiser and the reason why you should clap for them is that uh, so the people you're like oh I saw that guy on Jimmy Fallon or Craig Ferguson or Last Comic City that's how we pay for the plane tickets so make some noise for that too yes absolutely all right deal very scared of that all right it's <laughs> good um, I will do this. I will tell you that, that this is an arrogant lifestyle. This is an arrogant art form because I am expecting all of you guys to right away, unlike any other art form, like, you guys should only not, you should stop talking, but you should also just, just pay attention to me, right? So I have to prove to you within the first 30 seconds or a minute, like I'm a preacher or a salesman or something, that I'm worth your time, okay? So I'll do two one-liners, okay? And we'll see where we're at, okay? One, I think they should take pictures of missing transactions Let's put them on cartons a half and half. Let's put them on. Two, it's a legal question, it's a stumper. Siamese twins, can they rape each other? That's just considered aggressive masturbation. It's always weird when someone answers that, like clearly in Plessy versus Ferguson, it was decided. Alpha Coots wants Supreme Court references. I bring them. When you do stand-up comedy or any sort of uh, thing like this, people are uh, obligated to tell you who you kind of, sort of look like that they remember, that they enjoy. So uh, I'm aware of the fact that I kind of, sort of, a little bit look like the illegitimate love child of Harry Potter and Frodo Baggins. You could say hipster hobbit, and that's all right. You could be like, mm, maybe Elvis Costello had a really unsuccessful younger brother who's in insurance, and he's going through a painful divorce. Sure. Or maybe just that guy from Big Bang Theory doing stand-up, and you're like, oh, that's cool. All right. All right, we've established that. Um, the other thing I need to tell you real quick is, uh, ladies, I'm going to say something sexy to you, so please try and keep your panties to a mid so if all possible. <laughs> Trying to avoid a flood here. Ladies. That's a horrible word picture. These glasses I wear, they're not just to enhance my already evident, potent, on-stage sexuality. Nay, have to, mandatory. Got a lazy eye, pretty cool. 5% of the world has it, there's no cure, and they're not fucking working on one. It's true, if you go to lens crafters and figure out you have lazy eye, your prescriptions they just write, sucks to be you on a piece of paper. Science has gone a long way with a lot of things, right? But uh, Lisa, not so much, right? Like the best they've been able to figure out so far is uh, if they catch it when you're a little kid, uh, then they make you wear an eye patch. And that's supposed to inspire your bad eye to get back on that horse and ride. That's it. After thousands of years, that's the best they've come up with. Now, you may not be a math super genius like myself, but you can probably do this equation, which is ugly, scrawny, short kid who sucks at sports and moves around a lot, plus eye patch <laughs> equals Mr. Popularity. <laughs> It's uh, weird like when people like, they're like, oh, I had that and, and I fixed it. I'm like, screw you. Like, I went to an optometrist in Tulsa. You don't get much. He just was like, hey, you're lucky you're not totally blind. All right, I'll give you that. Could be worse. Sure, everything could be worse. The, the weird thing is like, I could do a monocle. Like, I could do a monocle, right? Because the other one works. But no one wants to fuck Mr. Peanut. Like, ever. <laughs> Oh man. Um, I've also, uh, I've been up here for four years and I've learned a few simple truths about doing comedy at Coots or just in Alaska in general. You have to pop, talk about your dick within the first five minutes or they're not going to pay attention. So we'll just get this out of the way, alright? Sleepy, hard, whatever. It just kind of looks like a field mushroom that needs to take a nap. 
you have like girls have like one boob that's like slightly not as symmetrical like I have like really weird balls okay like very different like I have two face from Batman balls like one of my balls like went to law school and he's best friends with Bruce Wayne but my uh, my other ball has been horribly scarred by acid during a mafia trial has a little spangly suit <laughs> You're supposed to, uh, when you're booking, they, they want to know what style, what genre uh, that they can put you into uh, for comedy. And uh, I usually just say, like, I'm a fart in an elevator. You may not enjoy me, but you will eventually acknowledge my presence. <laughs> if you guys get the chance to have a job where you work under blacklight on a regular basis, fucking don't. You will learn stuff about yourself that you don't want to learn, but you will find that out the hard way. You will learn that there's three things that glow in the dark that shouldn't, but they do. Blood, urine, and semen. It's cool, though, because you know ahead of time what kind of lady you want to take home that night. <laughs> Done a lot of focus group research. Way creepier if I leave that joke open-ended there. <laughs> I got... Um, I, I, used, I was a journalist before this, and uh, back when people read newspapers, it's a long time ago. And uh, the thing that I, the, I, the best story I ever wrote was I just got to interview people like uh, who were uh, just like going to work in Chicago, and I just asked them, just like in a Twitter post or so, like just meaning of life, whatever it is, you can put down anything. And what surprised me was the answer I got the most was just without thinking, just you know, believe in your dreams, bro. Believe in your dreams. That is the lamest of them all, if you had to pick one, all right? Because basically if you follow that logic, that line of thinking, the reason why I'm alive, the reason why I got out of work, the reason I'm talking to this microphone, is because uh, the one I have where I'm uh, about to be uh, crowned uh, Miss Minnesota. And uh, I'm still male, but I'm gonna get crowned Miss Minnesota, and they're gonna make a, like a portrait out of me, out of butter. But there's a talent competition, and I can't find my accordion. <laughs> And then, uh, like, I go to this hallway, and there's just all these creepy guys, like one of those, like, 70s Disney movies, right? You know, they're all just laughing. Just say, don't base your life on that. Silly talk. Uh, I got in trouble at work because I uh, did not participate in uh, the Bloodmobile, and uh, the guy at work uh, that was running, he was, he was like, oh, so you, you just you don't want to. It's not that you can't. I'm like, no, I can't. Like, there's... Municipal, state, federal, maybe international laws for why I shouldn't. And you guys probably been there. You guys can probably relate to this. You know, you're at an airport in Guam, you know, picking up a kidney. And then you meet a, like a tattoo artist from Iraq. And you're like, I don't really know this person's name, but when am I going to have to have unprotected anal sex again? <laughs> If I could turn back the hands of time. <laughs> um, one real quick thing uh, is, um, I'll, I'll just do this real quick. If you, uh, I suffer from depression, and if you're having a bad day, these are two things that help me tremendously. One would be, uh, this is an old standby, you probably a little, it's just uh, hold a fork out in front of people you don't like and pretend that they're in prison. <laughs> If that doesn't work, my backup is you just put on the song Message in a Bottle by the police. Whatever your feelings are about Sting, they're probably right, but you should still <laughs> listen to that song. Not because of the lyrics, but you're going to change the word bottle and insert the word butthole. <laughs> if you get to the part where it's been two years since he left that note and you're not at least smiling, it's too late. Just kill yourself. <laughs> First comedian of the evening performing for you uh, will be one of the many comedians uh, that is uh, taking part in this uh, contest that's going on next week. And um, yeah, we have a vibrant open local mic scene here, and you should check it out. He's wonderful. He's in his fifth trimester. Please put your hands together, Mr. Chris Coleman, everybody. Make some noise.